Probiotics, again, I, I'm always hedging on this because I don't know the answer, but I haven't seen a probiotic that works yet. So could a probiotic go in there and outperform or outcompete or uh, inhibit E. coli? Show it to me. I'd, I'd be curious. I'd love to have something like that. It, it could be a, it could be a thing, but I just don't know what that thing is. So, uh, but uh, to my knowledge, there's nothing out there that that sort of defeats this yet. Well, that's like during treatment, you know, when the person has the SIBO or EMO. But I think what most people are concerned about is after elimination, after eradication, do is it necessary to come in with probiotics? You know, we know with rifaximin in your study, it's not that just removing the overgrowth, the microbiome comes back to normal. Um, yeah. But that this is what everyone is wondering, you know, should we use them at this time? Yeah, so, I mean, look, I- It I, sounds I, like the jury's think, still out. It sounds like you haven't committed yet. The jury's yeah. still out, but I think, but I think yeah. rifaximin is sort of this weirdest drug of all time in a sense that doesn't cause resistance. I don't know why. I mean, I know the mechanisms of why, but- but it just seems very fortunate. Uh, it just mostly kills the E. coli and the Klebsiella, and then you get this, the, the, everything returning to normal. And you can use it time and again, and it continues to work. And so what a blessing. I mean, uh, you know, because a lot of antibiotics don't work that way. And so I'm, I'm really grateful that this is the one that we tripped across because uh, it, it really so far has been fantastic and, and hope we continue to be able to use it in the future.